Today we're talking about anemia and chronic kidney disease. Thanks for watching. It's a topic I really haven't gotten into for a lot, but I'm going to break it all down here, why it's important, why it needs to be addressed, what is it, and how to go about it. So thanks for watching. This is Healthy Kidney Inc. It's our channel on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe because we got loads and loads of good information to help your kidney health. So anemia and kidney disease. Now anemia and kidney disease is different than other anemias because anemias with kidney disease is caused because of the kidney isn't making enough of erythropoietin, EPO, it's a hormone that helps make red blood cells, helps transfer around your iron levels and it's needed to make red blood cells. So what happens in chronic kidney disease and the further stages that you have is you don't make enough of this hormone making you anemic. So how do you know, first of all, if you're anemic? So you want to look on your blood test. There's, some, there's a level called the hemoglobin level. Now, generally that level, if it's um, 13 is normal for males. If you're less than 13, it could be considered anemia. Some labs are a little different. It might be 12.8 is the cutoff, but this information is according to the American Society of Nephrology. So they're just going by a 13 hemoglobin for males, 12 for females. And when you drop below that, you become anemic. And anemia causes is the biggest cause of fatigue and kidney disease, just being exhausted. When I had really late stages of kidney disease and I had really bad anemia that wasn't getting treated, I was exhausted. I want to sleep all the time and I can sleep easily. And it wasn't until I got it corrected later or knew more about it or how to go about it. Uh, which unfortunately I didn't have the best care. So that's why I want you to be on top of it because a lot of doctors still aren't addressing anemia with kidney disease. So you know the values, you know if you're low. Now if your values go 11 or less on your hemoglobin, that's not good. That's considered bad because what happens is when you stay below 11, you, you make yourself much more prone to a lot more cardiovascular heart disease. On top of that, you actually will lose kidney function faster if you're anemic. And we just knew, found out about that a couple of years ago. It really wasn't common knowledge with uh, some of the first studies like 10, 12 years ago on this topic. And even though it's written about that it needs to be addressed, you should address anemia, a lot of doctors aren't. So if you drop below 11, that's bad. Dropping below 10 is really bad. Now, how do you raise that hemoglobin level up? So you can always get an EPO medication, uh, erythropoietin medication, erythropoietin stimulating agents. Ask your doctor because a lot of times you're really going to need one of those meds to help correct your anemia levels because you're not making the hormone. Another way that you can help correct it is by taking iron. Now with iron, you do have to be a little cautious here. So before taking iron, you should have a full iron profile test done. And within that iron profile is going to be a test called ferritin, F-E-R-R-I-T-I-N. That's ferritin. That's a storage molecule of iron. And that's one of the main values that we check your iron status by when you have kidney disease. So there is no optimal ideal range that anybody has come up with. We like the area of 100. That means you have good amounts of iron stores. Depending on the lab reference range, it can go anywhere from 10 all the way up to 150, 200, 250. It all depends on the lab value that they're using. If you're out of range on the ferritin, you don't want to take any extra iron. And even if you're at the high end of the ferritin, you don't want to take extra iron because extra iron where you're outside the values of the, of the blood work ranges for ferritin is bad. It becomes actually something that's harmful to your body causes oxidative stress, uh, free radical damage. So you don't want to have a high ferritin. So before you go taking iron, make sure your ferritin isn't, isn't in a really high range because it does happen sometimes. So it's in that 100 area is good. If you're not at 100, you're less than that, you can take some iron. So the iron will help, but generally uh, it's going to give you a limited amount, limited amount of benefit unless you really need it. So a lot of times you really need that EPO medication that you would take for a certain amount of time. Uh, you can also check B12 folic acid. These are other causes of anemia, but they're not uh, the common causes of anemia and kidney disease. Now, something else that you want to check to help your uh, anemia levels is your albumin, okay? That's, that's a protein, one of the main proteins that we use for malnutrition. Now, in kidney disease, if you're losing a lot of protein, your albumin could be low. So low being like 3.5% 3, 3 or less. 
Uh, if it's that low, then it's going to be having an impact on your iron level. So you want to correct that so that your body will have enough of the proteins it needs to make that hemoglobin along with the iron and the erythropoietin. So you can correct that by eating more protein. That might not be a desirable thing for you. That might not be the diet you're on. Your other options are using an essential amino acid complex. Our company makes one called Pure Kidney or you can use a keto analog of essential amino acids. We have other videos that talk about keto analogs, essential amino acids. You can take a look at those. Uh, we also have another video about iron, which is the ideal iron in kidney disease, the one that absorbs better uh, with less uh, stomach irritation, less side effects. It's an iron biz glycinate, but we have a video, uh, other videos about that. So you wanna do those main things. Something else you can try is L-carnitine. It's an amino acid. But I would try that last if your other values aren't improving with everything else. But they generally would, but in some small cases, L-carnitine and amino acid can help with your anemia levels, uh, 1,500 milligrams per day. That's something you can purchase at a health food store, vitamin store. Now, as far as foods, you might see a lot of articles or videos like, you know, you're going to eat these iron-rich foods, eat that spinach, uh, eat that beef to help your kidney disease. Unfortunately, it's not going to help you. You can't absorb enough iron out of food, you can't consume enough iron from foods to get the amounts that your body needs when you have kidney disease. Non-kidney disease anemia is a completely different story where you could use some foods depending on what your levels are or how anemic you are, but don't think foods are going to do it. Uh, sometimes I see people, they're like, oh, well, I went on this diet and I ate these uh, lots of spinach and lentils and look, I got improvement in my iron levels. It's because in cases like that, generally the kidney in general improves. You improve kidney function by a better diet. If the kidney functions better, well then you can make your hemoglobin, red blood cells, EPO better. Okay, So uh, keep those things in mind. Anemia is really important to address if you have kidney disease. It's something that hasn't gotten the attention it really deserves. Plus you're going to feel way better. But don't, if you're in the later stages of kidney disease, don't worry about hitting those ideal hemoglobin levels. You might not be able to. You might not get to that 12, uh, 12 12.8, 13 for men. Uh, and also you might not get up to 12 for women because the kidney is still having an issue there with making the, the hormones. So uh, if you get above 11, that's what we're looking for. That's great. If you're above 11 on your hemoglobin, man or woman, that's wonderful. You're going to reduce your risk of so many negative things happening. So anemia, thanks for watching everybody. Make sure you're corrected into your best kidney health. Bye.